I've been forced to do some housekeeping. <clears throat> As you know, the purpose of Inquisition Update on First Amendment Radio is, was, and always will be to expose the man of sin. To expose the lie, the diabolical lie that is futurism. To expose the ecumenical movement as essentially the defeat of Protestantism. I'm Inquisition Update was impressed by God upon what to do when I very first started this program. And I intend to stay on the narrow road that God has placed me on. But occasionally, I get an email from a listener that disturbs me. And a subject that takes me off of that road. And wisdom and good common sense dictates that I not go there that I stay with my nose to the grindstone doing what God has placed before me. But I'm, in this case, I just can't, I simply can't help it. You know, Inquisition Update could be turned into a battle axe against every form of error. Inquisition Update could become a, an attack dog of every liar, every deceiver, and every perpetration of error that has plagued God's house. And if I did all that, I wouldn't be able to do what God put me in, put me to do. <clears throat> so, I don't mention names. I don't focus on the errors being taught by the other so-called pastors and particularly not those who have airtime on First Amendment radio. I believe Inquisition Update does its job when it does the business that God put before me and letting that information alone open up the eyes of, a, of, of God's people and then God's people can make the judgments themselves about these deceivers. That is the way to do business. That is the way to do God's business. Just simply give the people the truth, and then all of the deceivers are exposed without even mentioning their names. But in the past... I have criticized one particular talk show host here on Inquisition Update as an example of, 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 of how the subtleties of Satan and his deceptions of the people of God. And the one I've criticized openly here on Inquisition Update is Alex Jones. Well, we all know who Alex Jones is. We all love to watch his programs, listen to his radio programs, one thing and another. <laughs> we all, except me. Anyway, <clears throat> I was uh, reminded by a listener and sent a video link to a YouTube video where Alex Jones, having, of all people, Leo Zagami on as a guest... And Leo Zagami potted up a video recording of this current Pope, this current Antichrist, Pope Francis I, speaking before the United Nations. And he opened his comments by saying, I come in my own name and the name of the Roman Catholic Church. And Leo Zagami a high-ranking Freemason, a secret listener to First Amendment Radio and Inquisition Update, has no doubt heard Tom Fress say, remind his listeners about the passage where Jesus said to the Jews, I came in my Father's name and you received me not. But there's one coming after me who will come in his own name and him you will receive. 
Well, guess what? The high-ranking Freemason, Leo Zagami, used that, that passage which I've always linked to the papacy, the entire papacy, and every pope throughout the history of the Roman Catholic Church. It is the papacy that is the Antichrist. The Antichrist is an office, a perpetual office. Not just one pope that can deceive the whole world, but a whole history of popes, 266 popes or thereabouts, throughout the Christian era that has deceived God's people, persecuted God's people, tortured, imprisoned, and destroyed God's people, burning them at the stake, stretching them on the rack to the tune of 500 million, and those are the only ones that we can count. And yet, Leo Zagami and Alex Jones together tried to twist what I say and apply that passage to this one particular Pope, Francis I, Jorge Bergoglio. Now, what does that accomplish? Can anybody tell me what that accomplishes? I'll tell you what it accomplishes. It makes Jorge Bergoglio the man of sin, the son of perdition. And that all previous popes and all subsequent popes will be the vicar of Christ. That once this man of sin who says he comes in his own name, in the name of the Roman Catholic Church, marks himself as the Antichrist, well then, whenever he dies or is taken out of office or somehow no longer the Pope, then we can get back to a real Pope. They're suggesting that this Jorge Bergoglio is a usurper of the papal chair. You know what this tells me? If I listen to that video carefully, what it tells me is futurism is true that the Antichrist is just one single individual. Jorge Bergoglio, Francis I, that's futurism. See, the Protestant Reformation was built on the belief, the uncompromising belief, the unanimous belief that is the, that the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, is the entire office of the papacy. And every pope who sits upon that chair is the Antichrist. <clears throat> and that the life of the Antichrist spans the entire Christian era, fulfilling all the prophecies of Antichrist so explicitly that no one else could even be a candidate for the Antichrist but the papacy. Did you realize that is the very foundation upon which Protestantism is built? If you don't believe that the papacy, the entire papacy, is the Antichrist, then you cannot call yourself a Protestant. Now, Rome has always tried to shift the onus of Antichrist away from the papacy. That has been the groundbreaking lie that has been forever told in the Roman Catholic Church. Let me ask you a question. If the papacy insists that the popes are not the Antichrist, then why do they work so hard to shift the onus away from themselves? And how did they shift the onus away from the office of the papacy? But through futurism. That the Antichrist is just one single individual that comes sometime before Christ's return, and, dis and then dis one man, just one man, who we know God has given the lifespan of a man to be three score and ten years, so 70 years, he's got 70 years to deceive the whole world. He's got 70 years to bring all the kings of the earth into his control. It's untenable. And yet the whole Christian world believes it. And Alex Jones promotes it. So does Leo Zagami. And by twisting the words of Inquisition Update. Now I got one listener that's just all uppity excited about Alex Jones is finally exposing the papacy. Finally exposing this pope. 
Maybe Alex Jones is beginning to see the light. Maybe Leo Zagami, the 33rd degree Freemason, is beginning to see the light. This Pope Jorge Bergoglio says he comes in his own name. Well, that's exactly what Tom Fress has been saying. That the papacy comes in his own... No, 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 no. That's not what they're saying. They're saying Jorge Bergoglio comes in his own name. You know what the name is? Vicar of Christ. That's a name that the papacy goes by. That's the title and name of the papacy. They all ascribe to themselves the title Vicar of Christ. Not just Jorge Bergoglio. Every pope from beginning to end has represented himself as the replacement of the Son of God on earth. God in the flesh. That's the official teaching of Roman Catholic canon law. So what makes Jorge Bergoglio the exception? He's not an exception. He's just one of the 266 bodies that Satan has put upon the throne in Rome. And if you think for one minute that Alex Jones is coming to the light, I'll tell you what it is. Alex Jones has so much experience deceiving people and deceiving Protestants that he's become really sophisticated in his deceptions now. There isn't a Protestant bone in his body. He has no right to call himself a Protestant. Leo Zagami has no authority to twist what I say and apply it to one pope when I have never done the like. They're deceiving you and seeming to be anti-papal. Now, if you believe, as they imply in their video, that Jorge Bergoglio is the Antichrist, he's the one that comes in his own name, and him the people will receive, well, then you believe in futurism. That the Antichrist is just one man. Not a whole dynasty of popes. That all the martyrs of Jesus before Jorge Bergoglio died in vain or died you know, Fox's Book of Martyrs, which implicates the entire history of the papacy, every one of those martyrs slain by the popes of Rome, that's insignificant. What's significant, according to Leo Zagami and Alex Jones, is that this man comes in his own name. He must be the Antichrist. How convenient for all the previous Antichrists that have sit in that office and slain God's people, and destroyed God's people, and destroyed the Bible, and declared open warfare of annihilation against Protestantism. You see how sophisticated Alex Jones has become in his deceptions? Now before, he became so sophisticated, he just simply wouldn't allow anybody on his program to criticize the, the Catholics, the Catholic bashers wouldn't allow anybody to come on his program and talk about the Jesuits or the Knights of Malta. And if you tried to make a comment in the comment section on his website, if you mentioned Jesuits or Knights of Malta, your comment never appeared. It was just canned. Alex Jones has been a shill for the Vatican his entire career. And I've got one listener just livid. Alex Jones is telling the truth about this pope. And in the meantime, he's exonerating the entire history of the popes. And every future pope past Jorge Bergoglio. That's deception. That is calculated deception. Alex Jones is a deceiver. Leo Zagami is a deceiver. And I don't care how much truth Alex Jones or Leo Zagami tells about Jorge Bergoglio... Jorge Bergoglio is just one of many antichrists. And I'm incensed that they dare to take the teaching of Inquisition Update and apply it specifically to Jorge Bergoglio, thus continuing the counter-reformation of the Jesuits and the Council of Trent. I condemn Alex Jones in the strongest possible terms. 
And the more sophisticated his deceptions become, the more I condemn him. And now my listener says, well, at least he's doing more than Chuck Baldwin. At least he's doing more than Rick Wiles. Let me tell you something. I've worn out a keyboard trying to convince Chuck Baldwin who the enemy of Christ is and never gotten one single response from that man. Now, he's highly respected here at First Amendment Radio, but I've got no respect for him. There isn't a Protestant drop of blood in his veins. Now, he might well be an American a patriot. He might be a defender of the Constitution. But he's not a Protestant. And Rick Wiles is so ecumenical, it defies me that he doesn't apply to become a Roman Catholic priest and enter the Roman Catholic priesthood. Now there, I've said it. I've made myself an enemy of the deceivers on First Amendment radio. Going where even angels fear to tread. And I've departed from the straight and narrow of Inquisition update to silence a deception so crafty in its, con in its construction as to render it even more diabolical than it was before. Now, I'll tell you something. I once had hopes that Alex Jones was coming around. He, he had Chris Pinto on his program. And so I listened in, thinking Alex Jones would double him up and talk over him and discredit him and make an example of Chris Pinto. But I was amazed. Alex Jones kept his mouth shut and let Chris Pinto tell the Protestant truth. He let Chris Pinto build the Protestant claim against the papacy as the Antichrist. He talked about his video, the true history of the Founding Fathers. And Alex Jones let him do it. And Chris Pinto dutifully tore down the papacy more expertly even than I could. And he exposed the Jesuits more expertly even than I could. And Alex Jones let him. And I'm thinking, Alex Jones, is what has happened to Alex Jones? He's always been a shill for Rome. Now he's allowing a gift to tear down the papacy? Giving the true Protestant message? And then a commercial break came up. And I was patient, impatiently waiting for the commercial to be over. The, in, the commercial was over, and Alex Jones came back on the air, and he made a disclaimer. <laughs> I should have predicted it. My guest doesn't express my own personal views, he says. You better believe he didn't. <clears throat> and Chris Pinto to this day condemns Alex Jones just as vehemently as I do because he's a shill for Rome. He's a shill for the papacy. And just because Alex Jones finds something wrong with Jorge Bergoglio does not exonerate the entire history of the Antichrist nor any future Antichrist that sits on the throne in Rome. Alex Jones is perpetrating, tacitly perpetrating the, and perpetuating the belief in futurism. And by that, he is on the warfare against Protestantism. And if you take Protestantism out, if you destroy the beliefs of Protestantism, then there's no Protestants left. And who does that leave open for complete control, total control? The papacy, the Antichrist. Do you realize Protestantism is the only enemy on this planet against the man of sin, the son of perdition? And that if Protestantism dies, the whole world will be enslaved by the papacy? What credit does Alex Jones get? What credit does Alex Jones deserve by becoming even more sophisticated in his deceptions? By simply throwing a bare bone for the Protestants to chew on by denouncing this Pope and indicating directly or indirectly that he may be the Antichrist. 
I hope I'm making sense to my listeners. I hope I'm making sense to my listeners. The papacy is the Antichrist. Every single pope is the Antichrist. This Jesuit pope is no more an Antichrist than every other pope that sat before him and or ever will sit after him. The Protestant reformers were correct. Alex Jones is a deceiver, and Leo Zagami twisted the teaching of Inquisition update to draw attention to himself and to Alex Jones. I won't allow it.